What is going on everybody? Lucian Dev here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a 7 Days to Die server. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to want to do is download the Steam CMD. If you do not already have it, you can do a quick Google search for Steam CMD here. I'm going to go ahead and click on this link. All right. I'm going to go to Windows. And we're just going to download it by clicking this little button right here. Save it to a zip folder. So, let's go ahead and open up our downloads. I'm going to extract it. All right, Steam CMD right here. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right click and go ahead and hit copy. Or you can do cut, whatever you, uh, whatever you fancy. I'm gonna put mine in the C drive. It's, it's where I like it. Uh, in the C drive, I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call it servers. Then in there, I'm going to paste the Steam CMD folder. I'm also gonna create another folder and we're going to call it seven days to die all right let's go ahead and get steam zoom d we're going to open this up it's going to install a bunch of stuff it's going to wait a second for it to do this thing fantastic now that it is done first thing i'm going to want to do i'm going to go back here open up this folder here i'm going to copy this path right here then for right here i'm going to do force install directory and then paste the path right in there done now we're going to log in anonymous and go ahead and allow access to the internet all right now what i want to do is actually install all the files so for that i'm going to do app update then we're going to do 29442 oh, caps lock i'm sorry num lock was off so again, we're going to do 294420, and we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And we're going to wait for it to do its thing. Alrighty, now that that's done, we are basically 90% of the way there. So we can go ahead and close this up. Now in our 7 days die folder, you notice we have a bunch of new stuff. All right, so before we want to go ahead and start the server, uh, what we're going to want to do is set up the configuration file. You can open it up with your favorite text editor. Mine happens to be Sublime. Here you're going to want to change your name. Uh, we'll call it Blind Dev Server, right? Your description, all the stuff that you'll need is also right here to kind of help you uh, get through that region, language. If you got a website, if you want the server password, all that good stuff. This is the port you're gonna need right here. We're gonna go ahead and do that next real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. Next we're gonna wanna do is open up the firewall. We're gonna go to inbound, create a new rule. Go to select ports, hit next, TCP, paste the port in. Allow connections, call it seven days to die TCP. And I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to select UDP, paste the port in there again, leave all the settings as default. Seven days to die UDP, finish. Boom, done. Now, um, if you want to have like different um, ways to manage the back end instead of like actually logging into the back end itself, like if you want to do the uh, the web panel or the uh, telnet, you can just set these things up. Default telnet is set to true. This only listens to the local port. Uh, if there is no password, it'll only listen to local. No matter what this is just because uh security reasons um so if you want it to if you want to access it outside of the local network um you have to put a password you can leave the port the same but you got to put the password in. and obviously if you want the web panel you have to put the password in and then uh you're gonna want to change this from false to true and that's that uh in this case i'm not doing any of that because um, for me if i want to manage the server i'll just come straight into the back end and manage it like that. So it's super simple to do. All right, uh, once you got all that, you're gonna want to save it, control S, or you can go 
File, save, whatever tickles your fancy. And after that, you can go ahead and start your server up. This is going to go ahead and boot up the server and go through all that fun process. And that is it. You're going to want to allow access to the firewall, even though we already did it. This just allows the program to go through the firewall. Wait for that baby to boot up, and then you can find it and log in. All right. Now, typically what I like to do is create an update script. So whenever I want to update the server, instead of having to go back to the Steam CMD and uh, run the update process, uh, through that, I like to make my life a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. There's a text, uh, text, document, text document, if I can speak. We're going to call this uh, update server dot VAT. I'm going to go ahead and yes to that. So by the way, if you don't see the extension files like dot .bat, dot .txt, .dll, uh, what you're going to want to do is going to hit up view Right here on the right hand side, you'll see file name extensions. Make sure that is ticked. And then you'll be able to see all the extensions like this. And then you can go in and uh, change it from the dot text to dot bat. And that's how you do that. Pretty simple. All right, so we're gonna right click on this and hit edit. I'm gonna paste this code in here. Um, I will have this code down in the description below. So you don't have to worry about trying to sit here, try to type it out real quick. Uh, as I'm going through the video here. And what this does is just, it reads the uh, path that I chose, and then uh, it puts it into the server path that's also chosen. You can change these if you want, if you did not do the file structure like I did in the beginning. Uh, just change those to whatever path uh, that you want. Then you're gonna uh, control S to save it, or you follow S again, whatever tickles your fancy on that. And then that's done. So whenever you want to update the server, just make sure the server is off, like mine's currently off. And then you're just going to go ahead and double click on that. And it updates the server. Super fantastic. I am not going to do that because it's the fresh install. I already know the server is fully up to date. And that's pretty much it. That's the end of the video, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. And I will see you guys on the next one.